Hello everyone, this is me, Ibrahim Hassalam. Today we will continue our work in relay logic for motor operation. Let's go to we'll have a very good exercise today. Okay, this is what we need to do. Okay, exercise one. Uh, exercise one draw the power and relay logic circuit of a motor control center that can be used to fulfill the following function. Feed three phase induction motor from two three phase sources main and backup reverse the reverse motor direction okay from the first look to this exercise we can recognize we had to our control over our mo our circuit uh, relay logic circuit will do two different functions we have a main supply and a backup uh, supply if we have failure in the main supply we can transfer automatically to our backup supply and other function we uh, we need to have the motor reverse direction feature okay for the first function so to we will need two contactors the first contactors to connect the main feeder and the other will connect the backup feeder or the backup supply and reverse motor direction will have also two contactors one for clockwise direction and one for counterclockwise direction uh, this is our design we have a power circuit and control circuit. As usual in relay logic, we have two circuits, a power circuit and control circuit. Okay, let's look to the power circuit. We have feeder one and feeder two of the main supply and the mac and the backup supply. Uh, we have uh, feeder one contactor. This contactor once is activated, the power will come from feeder one to our rest of our circuit. And if feeder two activated, the power will come from feeder two and so on. For sure, we'll have a mechanical uh, interlock between feeder one and feeder two contactors. So, uh, if feeder one activated, feeder two will not be able to activate, and vice versa. If contactor two activated, feeder one can be activated. Okay, we have. Uh, okay, let's go to the next step. How we can detect if feeder one uh, failure or not, or we have a failure in feeder one or not? We make a very nice trick. We add our a small uh, a small relay here. As you see, this is the relay coil. We ca we call it feeder one relay. So if feeder one uh, connected or live or in, under good condition, uh, so the coil will be energized and we can take it. Uh, and the, and the relay coil can be used in our control circuit to detect which uh, which feeder is uh, available. Okay, if feeder 2 fail, the coil will be de-energized and the contacts uh, will change its uh, go to its original position. So, if feeder 1 here, uh, the coil is energized. If feeder 1, uh, if we have failure in feeder 1, the coil will be de-energized and based on this cases, we can choose which contactor will be activated. Sorry, as usual, we have our circuit breakers. Okay, to, for, to protect our motor from short circuit and failures. And our control and our power circuit. Now we have two contactors, one for clockwise direction and the other for counterclockwise direction. And you can see this one phase the uh, supply the phases and this one reverse one of the phases. Okay. Finally we have overload. Okay, let's go to our design. Our control circuit. We have the four contactor, feeder one contactor, feeder two contactor, clockwise direction contactor. And counterclockwise direction contact. Uh, this part is the usual part we had discussed before. We have our fuse, our overload protection relay, the auxiliary contact of our overload protection, the stop button. Okay, if the user wants to rotate the motor in clockwise direction, if you have to press on this button, the current will flow. Clockwise direction contactor will be activated. And we have our auxiliary contact to latch the press. Okay, the user presses stop, the current will stop flow and the motor will stop. For counterclockwise direction, just press the button and the current. Okay, if the user press in clockwise direction, the motor will rotate in clockwise direction, but if the user press in counterclockwise direction, no control signal will flow. Since we have uh, an auxiliary contact normally flows here, so if uh, clockwise direction is active, this bus would be open set if and same thing here if the counter clockwise direction contactor is energized this contact will be open circuit so the current will not be able to flow to the uh, to our contact. 
factor pi. Okay, let's go to uh, supply selector control circuit or feeder one and feeder two contact. As you can see here, we have fuses just normal and uh, two contact, one normally open and one normally close from feeder one relay. Okay, let's have a look. If feeder one is here, so the coil is energized, so this one contact will convert it from normal open to short circuit and the current will flow. So contactor one will be activated and in same time contactor two will be deactivated. Contactor two, feeder two contactor will be deactivated. If we have failure here, the contactor will be open circuit. Uh, it will be open circuit, and and here will be short circuit. So we can supply contactor two, uh, feeder two contactor will be activated. This is our circuit, I mean uh, power circuit and control circuit. Now we we'll go to next step. We will use EKTS to simulate this circuit or this task. Okay, let's open EKTS software. This is the one. Start by the control circuit this time. This is our line. Neutral. We have three contactors, uh, four contactors. One, two, three, four. Have a good arrangement. Now I will require the neutral. With it, uh, main bar. Okay, we have one more contactor. We can call it supply detector. Let's say supply detector. We call this one feeder one. Sorry. And this contactor called feeder two. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Let's make this means okay. We have our stop button. Stop. The interlock between the two contactors and two stop buttons. Right here. And the other one is here. So it must be auxiliary contact, not switches. And also, it must be shops only. I keep making mistakes. Okay, normal close one, two, and then we have two start button for one, two, let it right. This one for counter clockwise. And no, 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 we need to have a latch. Okay. This one here. This one here. Mm -hmm. 
and it will be open to us. Let's do this too and we will normally open. Okay. I think this is all the basic component we need. This one here. This one here. Just to clean our line, make it looks much better. Sublight detector. Uh, this one is a sublight detector. Okay, we have the stop. This is to start requires the option. Take more time than I expect. <laughs> hmm? Dun, dun, dun. So we need to name everything clockwise, counter clockwise. This one will be clockwise. Counter clockwise and this one clockwise. So we have interlock here, and this is our latch. This runs as a light detector. Okay, we need to have three feeders, two feeders, and this is our first feeder. This is our main, this is our back, and this is our backup. Backup. Okay, we just emulate a feeder failure by using this three phase switch. So we can simulate a feeder failure if we use these three switches. So if I activate it, the, they will transfer to. This is our two three phase. We have two con uh, sorry. We now have two contactors. So co the three phase contactor coil. One, two, rotate, ninety degree, and this one will rotate ninety degree. And this way we simulate a feeder. Uh, feeder. We can simulate the figure. Mm -hmm. R. Yes. Okay. Nice. Now we have only the neutral point. Okay, our supply detector now is quite ready. Okay, now we need to have clockwise direction and counterclockwise direction, but so normally open one, two. Rotate and rotate. Finally, we have our three phase motor, induction motor, three phase. This is our motor. Okay. A, R, S, T, 
जी और मैं ओके टू द सरफेस Okay. This is clockwise direction. This is counterclockwise direction, and this is feeder one. Just one. This is feeder one. Contact, and this will be feeder two. I think uh, we're ready. Now, uh, let's run and see what will happen. Okay, see. Uh, our, fair, our supply detector is energized since the feeder one power is coming through it. So it's the contact feeder one contactor is activated. Okay, I will emulate a failure. See, the once I emulate a failure, so I just move the on uh, the switch from clear points or passing here. Contactor two activated since this one is de-energized, so the current flow from this one. Okay, then try then. This is this is the concept of the automatic transfer switch. Okay, let's start the motor. Uh, press clockwise direction. As you can see, the motor now supplied from the first feeder and rotated in clockwise direction. If I press start in counterclockwise direction, as you can see, since the, uh, the con uh, clockwise direction contact is activated, so we have here open circuit. Anytime I press, nothing happened. I had to press stop first and then activate the counterclockwise direction okay let's emulate the failure again if it failed now it will be fit from the backup supply we'll take clockwise direction stop counterclockwise direction now this is the end of our video today thank you a lot thanks a lot for you for listening bye bye